Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making sliding dovetail pinch rods. This is a design from Reed Plains and it is really, really cool. It's got a couple innovations, but we'll get to that a little later. Let's dive into making these. So Reed Plains has done it again and he has created some more plans, this time for a really interesting design for pinch rods. And he sent me a preliminary kit so we're gonna have fun making that today. I'm gonna to start with some hard maple. I want something that is relatively easy to work, but is very sturdy because there are gonna be some small pieces in this. And when you're working with small pieces, you need them to be something that has some structural strength. Hard maple is usually the first one that comes to mind for that. Though there are many others, you want something that is diffuse porous, smooth wood, planes well, um, but still resilient and, and doesn't dent up and scratch. So I'm going to start by ripping off really thin strips of this, and then I can cut them to length. Um, I find that the, the actual smoothing and detailing of them works better with smaller pieces, but the larger pieces, it's easy just to rip them all as one big thing. So then we can actually plane them down to their final thickness and hit that marking gauge line until they're exactly where we want them to be. And this is always the, the, the pleasing part where you're getting things close to the dimension they should be and everything's looking good at this point and you don't really see the disaster that's about to happen. <laughs> when working with thin things, sometimes I put them between dogs. Sometimes I have to put a, uh, another stop on there so that my dogs can actually reach. Sometimes I'll just do them freehand. Sometimes I'll put down double-sided tape. Um, every piece is a little bit different. So we're going to take these thin ripped pieces and rip those down into even smaller pieces. Uh, sometimes it's easier to rip those vertically in the vise, and I would do that with a pole saw usually. Um, but uh, a lot of times it's easier to rip them lengthwise at the, uh, at the bench hook. But in this case it's about six of one half a dozen of another, and I ended up using the, the pole saw method. You just raise them up a, a few inches at a time and they will cut right down. And it's one of the great uses for a pole saw. Anytime you're working with thin stock, small pieces, this is really where it shines and becomes a very useful piece. So once we get them ripped and ripped again to the right thickness and width, uh, then we can start working on cutting these down into little dovetails. This is where the problem really started coming out, is I've been trying to figure out how do I hold these pieces and plane an angle on them. And so I tried just holding them between dogs, but they're a little too small for that. Uh, I've tried freehanding them, and they're a little too small for that. But using the Bridge City block plane with the adjustable sides actually works really well for this. So the original idea, this is the cross section of the beam, is to have a base piece and then another piece glued on here, another piece glued on here, so you could cut the grooves ver um, separate of that. The problem is that I need to cut a taper on one side of this, and doing that accurately along the whole length is becoming incredibly difficult. So my initial idea was I'm just going to cut a sliding dovetail in one, one big piece. And so I'm actually going to go back and do that instead. So we're going to start back at the full size board that's three quarter inch wide. I'm going to start by putting a groove down the middle. And the, the groove is the, the smaller dimension of the dovetail. This will actually uh, give me most of the cutout I need to. Now, if I had an electric router, uh, once I have this groove in, I'd come in with the electric router and a dovetail bit and go Meow, and be done with it. And it would be a nice clean one. Uh, but uh, we're going to do this with hand tools. And there's a bunch of different ways of cutting that back. Um, I could, and I originally tried, I thought I would use the... Uh, uh, the side rabbit plane, which allows you to cut in the side. And that actually works relatively well, though most people don't have it. And it didn't work quite as well as I wanted to. So then I thought, well, let's just freehand it and cut back in with a chisel. And surprisingly, this worked really, really well. It's a little bit tedious as you have to go along it bit by bit, but with a larger chisel, it actually works out really well. And this is the method I ended up using, and uh, I, I really like it. It came out very, very well. I wasn't sure if this is the method I actually want to use, but after experimenting with a bunch of things, we learned quite a few things along the way to make these plans. So after getting really frustrated with this and uh, deciding to go off camera and working on it on my own time, uh, we found that there are a few ways, and Jeff actually captured those to make the small pieces in the plans. But on this one, I decided to go the method of cutting the groove in. So I did it the same way we did before with cutting the groove and then chiseling back in. That's where we're going to take this from. I ended up making the groove a little bit wider than the plans, and I think I regret that. The pieces on the side are a little weak. I thought maybe that might give me a little more wiggle room, but if I had to make it again, I would probably just follow the, the plans that we came up with. It's a little bit smaller groove. 
So now that we have the dovetail, the sliding dovetail groove cut, we can rip this off and then cut it to length. I'm starting with 12 inch long sticks, so that will end up giving me about uh, 20 inches that I can fit in the pinch rods. Um, but with the sticks coming out the side, that means that I have uh, about 11 inches of expansion and contraction. After ripping them down, we can come back and clean off the backside, and it's a lot easier to work with these pieces than it is to work with uh, the smaller pieces. If you find yourself uh, the plane just being a little bit harder to push, put a little wax on the bottom, and it's amazing how smooth it can be. Using a bit of a, uh, a simple hard paste wax uh, can do an amazing job on there. A lot of people like oil, and I have a few videos on different types and different uses. Now we also need to make a few small pieces that slide inside. Uh, Jeff actually recommended that they be made out of laminated wood, so you take veneers and laminate them up, and that would probably be the better way to go. Uh, but I thought, you know, let me give it a try with doing some hardwood. Um, don't do it that way. Use some laminated wood, or in this case I actually used a small piece of aluminum for one of them, uh, but having a solid piece you really run into issues. I needed to cut that dovetail that then slides in, and so it's very easy to put the block plane upside down and then cut it at the angle it needs to be. And then we can cut off these small pieces, shape them, and fit them in. Uh, and here's where I started to run into the next problem. Uh, one of these we need to drill a hole through and tap, and if I had made them out of laminated wood as the plans expect, say, uh, I wouldn't have so many problems. But uh, I decided, well, it's hard maple, I can do that, so we're going to try and make it out of that. You need uh, four of them that fit in each end as a plug. You need one that is free sliding down the middle, and then you need another one that's double sided uh, that connects the two pieces together. So for the two pieces, uh, actually, uh, I actually worked out pretty well on this. Uh, you cut two small pieces and you glue them together face to face and you have a uh, double uh, dovetail, so it slides in both dovetails. A little bit of glue, a little bit of clamping, and uh, let it set aside, and this actually works really well. Um, the laminated wood would probably would have been a little cleaner and a little easier, uh, probably hold up better in the long run, so yeah, follow the plans. Uh, I'm experimenting and playing, and that's what a lot of this is. So I'm going to use the, the wood glue to hold it, but then I'll put a little bit of CA on there to uh, just make it come together quicker so I can actually use it clean off the extra glue, and uh, that's basically ready to use. It's just a simple block that will then get a screw put into it. I want to clean off all the extras, and a lot of times when you're cleaning small pieces, it's very, very easy to just do it on a file rather than trying to plane it or chisel it. And a good set of, piles, of files can do an amazing thing. So this will slide in one side, and then the other side will then catch into it. Uh, I found that there were a few spots where it was rubbing a little bit in the dovetail, and if you find that, uh, then it's very, very easy to just come back and chisel it out as you did before. For the end blocks, um, I decided to use a little bit of CA glue. They don't really have a lot of pressure, so CA glue works really well. I'm going to glue up uh, one block on either end separately, and then that allows me to smooth them down, plane them, and get them just right. Um, I'm going to leave the other end open so that we can work on that because we still need to put the small pieces in. So into the double sliding bit, you're going to need to pre-drill a hole through that allows you to then put in a small brass screw that comes with the kit. You can taper the back so that the head recesses in. And uh, then you have this tiny little screw that goes through into it and holds it on one end of the stick. Now you could glue it in place, uh, but it makes it much easier to take this apart if you can take that screw out and be able to slide those blocks around. Um, so yes, screw it in, don't, uh, don't glue it in, you'll, you'll probably regret that in the future. And with that, now these two sticks can slide against each other. If they're a little stiff, again, you can go back and clean those out. The kit comes with this brass knob, and that allows you to run a set screw into it and basically turn this into a bolt. I was having a little bit of problem with the, the, the free tapping of it, so I ended up coming in with the drill. And uh, yeah, here you can see another problem. Um, I didn't have it quite perfectly square, and so it's ever so slightly out of center. If you have a drill bit, uh, if you have a drill press, use the drill press. It works so much better with that. Um, I don't have a good drill press for that. But you can put in the set screw and then punch around it, and that will actually lock it in place and basically turns it into a bolt. This bolt goes through the first rod and then into a small piece that runs in the second rod. This is what actually will lock the two together so that they don't move when you want to capture the measurement. And yeah, small piece, we got a problem there. So tapping that little tiny wooden piece it's not going to happen. We're going to make that instead out of a piece of aluminum. 
So with the small piece of aluminum, I am going to cut that down to be ever so slightly wider than the widest point of the dovetail. This will allow me to file it back to exactly the right thickness. And I did a lot of the deburring freehand, but I found it much, much easier to then lock it in a pair of vice grips and then file it down. And this actually allowed me to match up the dovetail angle. And I went back and forth until I found that it just slid in there. I want it to be a little bit loose because it is going to pull it in. Uh, but I do want it to be able to slide from one end to the other. Next, we need to put a center point on it and then drill a hole and tap this because that bolt goes through one rod and then taps into this. And uh, again, it'd be better to do this on a drill press. Um, this time I was a little more careful making sure I drilled it uh, vertical. I'm going to clean off the burrs and then we can test it and make sure that it will run nicely on the bolt because we need to be able to tighten and loosen this regularly um, during normal use. And yes, I am a nut. Or at least I made a nut. <laughs> and these work pretty well. Uh, they're a little bit stiff. There's a few places I have to clean them up. Um, but now that they're all cleaned up, we can start gluing in the end pieces and getting these all fitting in right. On one end, we can glue them in. Then once these are cleaned, uh, once they're in, we can come back and clean them off. And it's really easy to hit them with a chisel or a shooting board. On the other piece, we have that screw that goes through the tapered hole and then into the block that doesn't move. So one end gets locked into that um, double-ended uh, dovetail, and the other one goes through with the bolt and then locks into that. And these two slide together so that you can then tighten it down, and there, it doesn't move. So you can move it or not move it. Hey! So on the end of this, I need to put in this insert so that I can thread in end points. The problem is that's a really delicate little fit and that's gonna be hard to get in there. Now the plans actually have a whole jig set up to drill that hole perfectly, but I'm gonna go somewhere else and I'm probably gonna end up regretting it, but I'm just gonna freehand drill those holes. So we center out a punch hole on there and then I use a brad point drill bit to drill out the hole. When I put in the insert, I want to make sure that it is spreading lengthwise and not across. I don't want it to be busting this piece apart, and so I'm having the pressure go lengthwise on it. We can tap it down in. It's, it's fairly easy to freehand, but it ends up being much, much easier to put a bolt in it and then tap the bolt down into place. That works really, really well. And when it comes to filling this head, I'm going to use the most evil route possible that annoys the most number of people, epoxy. Yes, I'm going to be using some epoxy in this one. I'm going to do another one in the future. Here's another set of pinch rods that we're going to be doing, and I'll do a domed wooden cap for that one. But for this one, mixing up some five-minute epoxy, putting a little bit of coloring into it, and then filling it up. And I'm just working until it just touches the sides, and that's all we need. Now we need to work on the little pieces that screw into the end so we have exact measurements. And for that, the kit comes with a set of bolts that you can modify to whatever method you want. Uh, there are two different sets that come with it, and there are a bunch of different recommendations on how you can shape the end to get exactly what you want. On one of mine, I have them tapered into a pin, and the other one I have set up with washers. I'll show you those in a minute. After that, it's on to finishing, and we just need to do a lot of the little detail pieces to clean it up, chamfer all the edges, break down all the corners, and just do those little touches that need to be done uh, before you apply the finish. Speaking of finish, boiled linseed oil. Ah, uh, happiness. Uh, yeah, could you expect me doing anything else? I mean, it doesn't really pop out much on maple. It's one of the reasons why I don't use maple that much because it just doesn't, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the color and there's not a lot of grain in it, but it is a very good, durable wood. After that has cured and the paste wax is on there, we can then screw it all back together. Here you can see with the epoxy on. I actually like how the cap came out. It's a really nice, clean design with a touch of color, and it fits out really well. And with that, uh, it's basically done. Here's the washers I was talking about. Which, uh, what are those washers for? Um, hmm. So why do we have the washers in the end when we also have these that have a point that can fit into a drawer bottom? Well, this will give you an accurate measurement for a drawer opening. So if I've got a drawer opening here, I need to know how wide this is so I can make the drawer exactly. I could pull out a tape measure, but also the other thing I want to know is the gapping so I have space for the drawer to go in. So if I extend this out and then lock this down, I have two measurements here. Number one is the outside of the washer to the outside of the washer. That is the width of the drawer opening. But I also have inside of the drawer to inside of the washer. And having the inside measurement gives me the out exterior dimension of the drawer. So now I have already accounted for the gap I need on both sides for the drawer to slide. 
and I can take this over and measure exactly the measurement of the drawer outside to outside of the drawer to fit into this opening. So then we also have these little ends that you can put on there, and this will allow you to get into a drawer slot. So if you've created your drawer and you need to figure out how big does the drawer bottom need to be, now we can loosen this up, slide them out, fit them into the drawer bottom, tighten this down, turn it, bring it out, and now I have the exact measurement for how wide my drawer bottom needs to be so it can fit into that groove that I just measured. Pinch rods. This project was definitely a challenge, but well worth it and a lot of fun. I really like how it came out, and I have several projects coming up where I'm going to need a set of pinch rods, so stay tuned for that. Happy! So there you have it. I, I really love this design. Pinch rods are one of those cool things, and uh, this particular design with the double dovetail slide is just absolutely ingenious, and you can make them any length you want. The nice thing with the ends is you can change them out and put different types on there or different applications for it. Um, really, really cool design. Now, Jeff is actually providing plans to these, and you can find those down below. He's also selling the kits where you can buy the brass pieces as well as all the hardware, so you can buy that as one piece. And soon he's probably going to come out with another set that have a slightly different hardware onto it. There's a bunch of different applications for these, and it's just kind of cool. I really like what he's doing with that, but if you want the plans for it, they're available. I'll leave links to that down below, or you can buy the kits on the website, woodbyright.com. Um, yeah, this is really, really cool. I've wanted a good set of pinch rods for a while, and there's a couple different designs coming out for them. And, uh, yeah, it's one of those tools that you don't need very often. But when you need to measure from distance to distance inside and you want a reality marking rather than trying to bend a tape measure, that's really just key. So I hope you like this. Um, if you do have any thoughts, comments, ideas, things I could have done better, this one was really a learning experience trying to figure out different ways of doing it. And uh, Jeff and I have captured that in the plans. He did an amazing job of drawing those out. Uh, if you have other suggestions to that, leave those down in the comments down below. We do read through them. And that does mean a lot. So thank you for that. Also, if you do comment down below or hit like, comment, share, subscribe, that really does help out the channel. It gets us in front of more people and it helps us grow. So thank you for that. That does mean a lot. If you want to take it one step farther, there are a bunch of people scrolling over here on the side. They are patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who quite literally keep this channel going. We are supported by you, the viewer. And without patrons or members, people who click that little join button down below, uh, we wouldn't be here. So if you want to financially help the channel, you can do that through Patreon or buying something on the website or click the little join button. All of those, thank you. That means more than I can say. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The real reason for pinch rods is it measures out a specific amount of seasoning. You know, a, a pinch of salt. Now you know how much that is.